Hi all, um, just going to do a video on how to check the pistons and valve clearances. Um, to be honest, I have really no clue what I'm doing just from what I've read. Um, it sounds like the process is not too difficult, um, but it is a little bit uh, complicated, so hopefully I don't mess it up. But I just kind of want to get a general idea. I don't know that I'm looking for in depth exactly what um, what I need. Um, but just, I just want to, honestly, I really just want to make sure that the um, that the lift, the added lift from the camshaft, uh, does clear the valve. The valves do clear, and there's no contact with the piston. So that's the whole point of I'm doing this. Um, I really, I know there's some like minimum and m maximum values that you should have. Um, I don't know what those are off the top of my head. I think it shows in my book, um, and I can add those um, in this video. But um, I'm not necessarily worried so much about that at this point. I just want to make sure that um, that the valves will even clear altogether. So, um, so what I did get was I got these um, these checker springs, um, and I'm gonna put these in the in the cylinder head in just a minute. Um, and I'm uh, um, and then I also got this uh, Play-Doh as well. Um, so, um, <laughs> hopefully this will kind of um, work to show some where the uh, the indentions are. I'm gonna put it in the top of the of the uh, piston, and then. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to, um, the valves will uh, compress this enough to where I can, you know, take a cutout and see what the kind of, just eyeball what the distance is um, and how much clearance I actually have. So um, we'll give it a try, see if it works. If it doesn't, then um, you guys get to see that too. Um, so I'm just going to give it a try and see what happens. Um, I'm kind of winging this one. Um, I've read, as I said, I've read a lot about it, but I don't really know what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to try it and uh, you guys can follow along. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, so to start this off, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the dowel pins in. Um, there's two of them, one down here and one down here. Um, part number is uh, 12570326. I'll put it right there. And uh, let's go ahead and get these guys in. This is, uh, I already did the other side, so this isn't too, too bad. Um, Okay, so that does that. Um, it is freezing out here in North Carolina right now, and um, my hands are frozen, so I'm doing the, this as best I can. Um, so next, I'm going to throw on the uh, cylinder head gasket. Um, it's I, I'm not going to tighten it down too tight, but um, I am just going to um, use the... Uh, my plan is to throw this on here, like, um, like so, where it says front, I guess it's the front. Um, and, um, what I'll do is I'll just, um, you know, kind of tighten the bolts, but not, uh, you know, um, tight, tighten them down too hard. Um, they are, uh, torque to yield, which means they stretch. So these ones are shot anyway. Um, so I'll get some new bolts, um, probably some ARP bolts, but, um, I'm going to reuse the stock ones for now just to, uh, get the heads on, um, just so I can measure. So, um, if you were wondering, um, I'll just do a really quick measurement on these head gaskets before I do slap the heads on. Um, but uh, let's see. So, I'm getting a compressed thickness of uh, point. Zero nine ish. Let me see if I can get that. Actually, no, that's the compressed thickness I'm getting is point zero five 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 six. So um, I don't know. I that's the compressed thickness I'm estimating. I mean, it could be less once I you know tighten the head down. I'm sure, but um, that's the thickness I'm gauging here. So um, if you're going to use this the feeler gauge method, um, that might be what I would go with. Um, but I'm just going to use the gaskets, and hopefully this doesn't destroy them too bad. I don't think it will. I'm just going to set them on there. Uh, the gasket part number is uh, 12589226. Um, um, uh, if you can see that, um, they are universal for both sides. 
So, all right. All right, so I'm gonna throw the uh, putty in here a little bit. All right, push rods are on there. Uh, rocker arms are on there. This one's already compressed. I tried to get it when it was on the base circle. I guess it's not, so um, my mistake. So let me do a turn on that thing. So, I didn't hear or feel anything obstructing it, so let's find out where it's at. Uh, reverse is just going to be uh, taking everything off, so I'm not going to record that. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Hopefully I got a good imprint, and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright, so it looks like from the side profile, I know this is kind of a, not an accurate measurement, but I don't know. I, I'm As I said, I'm just kind of guessing... And at this, but it looks like I got plenty of clearance. Um, I don't know. That's <laughs> that's quite a bit. Um, there's my pinky in reference, but um, you know, hopefully I did this as accurately as possible. I know it was uh, I was kind of learning as I went, but I didn't feel any collisions. And this Play-Doh looks like is making it look like I got plenty of room. So um, I'm gonna try to to go with that, and uh, we'll see what happens. I guess. Um, but anyway, that should do it. Alrighty, so this, uh, particular job that I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be, uh, checking the piston to valve clearance, and, uh, this is the second method, um, I'm going to try. So, um, hopefully this works, um, this is, um, I bought this um, particular dial indicator at um, Harbor Freight along with the base. I think uh, both of them together were uh, less than 30 bucks. So I think it's a good investment anyway. But um, I've zeroed, uh, zeroed out the dial indicator here and um, I have it sitting on the exhaust valve of number one. 
well, or at least what I believe is number one. <laughs> um, so uh, I have it sitting on the retainer, we're just kind of right here. Um, I have it zeroed out. So um, what it says to do, um, according to the book, uh, is it says to rotate it until you just slowly um, see the intake or exhaust, in this case, exhaust valve uh, open and then just push the valve all the way down until it contacts the uh, piston and record both of those measurements. Um, and then just basically keep doing it, I think, all the way through the cycle. So um, right now they're both closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, take several measurements. Um, and I'll let you watch me do that. And once I get done with that, um, I'll show you the math and um, hopefully there's no issues, but um, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and do it now. All right, so I rearranged it to put some tension on it, as you can kind of see. So hopefully that'll give me enough uh, to uh, bring the valve down all the way, I hope. Let's try it. Um, I'm gonna zero it out again. And it, the book says to get it as parallel to the, uh, to the valve retainer as you can. Um, but obviously I'm running out of room on my um, base here, so it's just going to have to fly for right now. So I'm going to zero it out. I'm gonna, there we go. Now I'm going to press it down and see how far it goes. Definitely going around like four times. So I think that's plenty. All right, let me reset this thing and we'll try to do the intake side. I know I didn't get really good measurements, but um, the book says um, the minimums are for is uh, an eighth of an inch for the exhaust side, and um, looks like a tenth of an inch for the intake side, so um, I would say I definitely have way more than an eighth of an inch for the exhaust, but let me check the intake. Alrighty, so now we're at zero again. Um, the exhaust valve is opening or closing, so that means the intake is uh, completely closed. So let's try this again and see if the intake, uh, we can measure the intake side. So now that I've got everything set, I'm going to try this one more time, and I have the intake valve, I think, uh, where it is closest to the piston. So, um, let me try again and see what I get. So, one, two, two, four, five, four, five, I'd say. Uh, so that's the closest I got. Um, I reset to zero. Let's try the same with the exhaust. All right, so now I got on the exhaust valve, and now I'm going to try to repeat that process and see how far down it goes. Um, so it is zeroed out for the most part here. So now we're going to press it down and see how far it goes. One, two, three. Let's say 3.55. So zero it out again. So zero it out. One, two. Uh, Okay, so we'll say, let's see, so it's actually more like two. One, 
to 2.5, almost five basically. So I'm going to write that down. So this was my method. Um, I tried to go by the book, but again, the book says it may not touch it. Um, so even at the closest, it's still quite a ways, it seems like. Um, that's definitely, I feel like, more than an eighth of an inch either way. So I feel like we're safe, but I'm going to try to do some math and make sure that we're still safe. Um, and uh, hope to show you the math portion of it.